Hi, welcome to our decorative bench tutorial. Uh, in this workshop, I'm going to show you how to paint the bench. We're also going to show you how to apply a transfer on our bench. Plus, we're going to apply a transfer on this pot. If you had decided that you were going to do a transfer on your bench. Uh, so the first thing I'll tell you is we actually already have painted the top of the bench and one leg. Two coats are ready, uh, just so you guys don't have to watch me paint the whole thing. So the way I did this when I first started painting this, I started at the bottom and I painted the sides here. There's no need to paint the inside of the bench because um, no one's going to see it anyway. And so I originally painted here, I painted the sides and I painted one leg and I will show you how to paint with this paint. We're using fusion mineral paint. We also decided on this bench we're going to use pebble which is kind of a green gray. It's actually the first time that I've used this color. Uh, it's uh, quite pretty. So you're going to get paint in a little dish like this and you should also have a paintbrush just like this. So you're going to dip your paint in and wipe off any excess so that you don't have any big blobs of paint. I'm going to start on the inside of this bench and I'm just going to go from the bottom to the top. Uh, sometimes when you get these big knots you might actually have to um, kind of push your brush in there. Uh, this paint does dry very quick so you don't want to go back once you have already um, applied it and you see that you got kind of a run or something you don't want to go back because you're going to get lines in there but this color is very good coverage you can almost see that you almost need you don't even need a second coat but we did put a second coat on this bench so just up and down wipe off the excess off your brush uh, I tend to paint fast quickly back and forth just like that and then and if you miss a few spots, that's fine because you are going to do a second coat. And you're going to want to get in the inside where the wood is kind of raw, which is, it's kind of cut against the grain. So it's kind of uh, rough there. You're going to want to push the paint in. Just kind, of, go, kind of dabbing motion, yeah, right? Yeah, kind of a dab with your brush. Just like that. And again, what you don't get the first time, you'll get in your second coat. Yeah, for sure. And I'm just going to grab the sides here. Probably the biggest thing when they're doing their sides there is just make sure that you don't get any um, runs over on your other side, right? right. Like just kind of run your brush on the edges to make sure that you don't have gobs on the other side. Right, yeah. Kind of check both sides. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah, this is a beautiful coverage here. What one coat is covers very well. And now I'm just going to flip my bench up because I don't want to paint on the paper because quite often it'll stick to my paper. So I'm just going to flip it up. So would you put your stick underneath where you painted there, Sandy, just yeah, to make sure you it can. wouldn't? Yeah, put a stick like that if you have any sticks at home or a piece of board. And this again here is the raw edge that you want to dab into. But then you also want to make sure that you check you don't have a run on the other side, a thick glob on the other side. Just like that. I tend to run my finger over so that if there is a thicker buildup of paint, then you end up wiping it off with your hand or a rag. So, 
I got one coat of paint on there. Once that is dried, you will paint a second coat. But before you paint a second coat, you're gonna wanna, you will get a piece of sandpaper in your kit. You're gonna wanna give it just a light sand. Sometimes the wood will fiber out, especially when you're painting on raw wood, and it'll feel kind of rough. So just feel it, and if it is rough, just give it a sand. And it'll just be a fine sandpaper just like this, and it's just a quick sand. Not, not a lot of pressure, just a little bit of pressure. And wipe it with your hand so there's no dust left on there. And then you can just give it a second coat. And I'll give this a second coat. Just quick brushes, light quick brushes, and then I just kind of go through. Kind of just to feather it just in. Just to feather it out. Yeah. There. And that is, so now we are going to stop and let this dry. And then we will come, oh, actually, no. We have the, <laughs> the pot to tin finish. pot. I totally forgot about our tin pot. So you're going to get a tin pot like this that's going to be completely with um, just a metal tin pot. We actually put Ultra Grip on, which is the Fusion Primer. It goes on white and dries clear. And this allows us to put the fusion paint over top of it. Um, so when you get your tin, this tin we already painted most of it because we want to put the transfer on today. So you're just going to basically do the same thing. Just back and forth. Just like that. And get your little edges around there. You don't, there's no need to go in the inside of your tin. Everything will be fine. There, and then that'll be ready to put, their, put our transfer on when we're ready. We'll come back in a few minutes. Hi, um, we're now ready to apply our transfer to our bench and our pot. Um, I just wanted to show you on the back of the transfer, It'll tell you the size. So these ones, there's two sheets and it's 12 inches long by 35 inches high. Uh, when you get the transfer, you wanna be very careful. They do usually, they have a piece, of, we've already opened this one once. So they'll have a piece of tape taped across here that you'll want to open up. Uh, the transfers have the transfer and then they'll have a backing paper on there. The transfer themselves is very, very sticky, which is this piece right here, and you don't want to touch it, and you don't, you don't want it to touch anything else because it will come off. So you want to make sure that this white piece of paper is attached to your transfer. Uh, quite often what we'll do is we'll take a piece of tape and just tape the ends so that they don't unravel and touch something else. And I'm um, talking from experience. We are talking from experience because we have had this happen. We've had this happen. So there's two sheets in here. And right here, I'm just gonna tape this end. And if there's two of you, it, it definitely is helpful, but you can do it by yourself. It's yeah. not something that you have to have two people, but yeah. So, oh, I got this one to touch. Oh shoot, just like that. See, so what happens is that white backing comes off, and do you see what happens? It automatically sticks to whatever it touches. So that's why we say to just tape your ends as soon as you open it, because yeah. it just tends to unroll or roll. Yeah, like just like, like we that. said, we've we've had this happen. So there, and I'm just gonna get this end. So you can see in this transfer there is quite a few flowers. Um, so, I mean, two or three people could probably easily. Oh, this one. Oh, what happened? Ah, just, oh, just like that. I ruined that one a little bit. I missed the tape on there. I'll just tape that up. What's really nice with these transfers, um, there's some transfers that are just like one piece. So you, you pretty well have to put it on as one transfer. 
But with this, the reason we chose this one is it has all these individual florals. And so we're going to cut the ones out that we want and then we're going to apply it to the bench and the pot. That's, that's why we chose this one, but not all of them are like that. And uh, we'll, sh we'll show you shortly how you, you can pick and choose which ones you want. Yeah. So now we're just gonna plan out our transfer on where we wanna put the flowers on the pot and where we wanna put the flowers on the bench. And which ones. And which ones, yes. So we're gonna plan that out and we'll be back. Hi, so we're going to apply the transfer now. So before you apply the transfer, you're just gonna give it a light scuff sand with your fine sandpaper, just so that we get rid of any of the little fibers that may be on the top of the surface there. So you'll see that we've gone through and we've cut out some of our uh, transfer. What is helpful too is if you have something um, heavier, just put on either end. We do find that once you have it laid out for a while, you can see it's not curling up anymore. But I still do recommend that if you are seeing that there's getting to be a gap or something, just put a small piece of tape just so that you're not going to risk um, messing up your transfer. So in your kit, there, what do we call this, Sandy? Just a rubbing stick, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So... Um, what we want to do is we want to start here and we want to come into the middle. We're not going to cover all the side and we're not going to cover all the top. Um, so we're going to start with a wrap and then we'll move on to the top. So when you cut it apart, um, you, don't have to, you don't have to cut like right around it or anything. If you look really closely on the back there, you can see where that white is and there's a little, little bit of a border around that white. That's what's gonna to adhere to your surface. This cloudy part won't. So you just have to cut around it roughly. You don't have to be really finicky about getting close or anything like that. So I'm gonna take it off. Um, I think we were gonna do the pink. Yeah, we're gonna start with the pink first. And the grid lines won't transfer on. So we're gonna start here. And I think a little bit of an angle. We're gonna wrap it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this surface first. So I'm gonna take the stick and I'm gonna apply some pressure. You wanna leave a little bit around your transfer because if you come too close and I'm doing this with my stick and I was really close, I'm probably gonna end up rubbing some of my paint off actually. So you wanna leave a little bit of a border and I'm applying the pressure here. And then I'm going to do it on the top. And you don't want to rub too hard because sometimes you can burnish it off too. And what can happen, so now I'm going to start peeling off, so I just take my fingernail and I go underneath and I see that it's lifting a little bit here, so I'm just going to do a little bit of rubbing. Ooh, nice. And if, I don't know if you can see this, it's coming up just a tiny bit right there. Just take your finger and just very carefully rub it down. going to very, very carefully rub. Not much pressure at all. Now, then we have this fern type, and you can overlap your transfers. So I don't have to worry that every one of them has to be separate. If I want to overlap it a little bit, I can do that. So I take this and I do this, it's going to overlap that a little bit. So it looks a little bit more natural than all your foliage being 
totally separate from each other. And then I'm going to wrap it on top. And we had just cut a few pieces out because we weren't sure exactly where we're setting them all. So we just thought we'd start with a few and then work our way and see where we wanted to. That was part of our planning. We just thought, start with a couple of them, put them on. And then as we go, we'll see if there's any other flowers we want to put on or. And then now she's just pulling it off. And again, just very lightly rub. So you get some of those edges down so that they yeah. stay down. It's a little trickier when you are overlapping. They tend to want to stick a little bit differently. But there, there you go. So I think we're just going to continue. Um, we'll come back and show you the finished product. What's really nice about this project is it's totally your creativity, where you want to go mm -hmm. and how, may, how much you want to apply. So we'll be back. Hi, so we're back here now with our bench. We've applied the uh, transfer on. Um, we, we noticed there was a few little spots here that we had to, we have to do touch-ups on. Uh, you can see right here. So we are going to touch that up with our paint. So that's just from burnishing it too much. Yeah. And and that's probably going to... And it's just rubbing the paint a little bit too yeah. hard. Um, so once, once you've finished applying your transfer, you want to actually take your hand and just rub it gently because there will be a few spots that haven't stuck down completely. Uh, and you'll notice them. And so you just kind of want to give it a nice little rub. It'll all be nice and smooth. Just like that. And you should actually, once you've got your project painted, before you apply your transfer, you should let it dry overnight and then apply your transfer. This way the paint is um, better secure to, your, to the bench and less chance of you doing any kind of burnish marks and stuff like that. So I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to dip in my container a little bit here and I'm just going to touch up a few of those spots. Just kind of, I'm going to rub my finger in it a little bit. I have a little bit heavy paint there. And it will dry back to the regular color. The color that it should be. So there's just a few spots. And you know what? If you're okay with them, just leave them. You don't have to actually touch them up. But we are going to touch ours up. So we're just going to let that dry. Then uh, we also have our little... Um, container here to put some some uh, transfers on uh, so I'm just going to show you how to cut we really didn't show you how to cut these before um, this is the piece we're going to put this long piece right in here and I'm just going to cut around it leaving some edge there just around just like that and if you feel that this is rolling up, just put a piece of tape on there so that it doesn't roll up on you. Um, so yeah, we're just going to apply. I'll just show you how to apply this one piece on here. We're going to apply it a little bit closer to the bottom because we're going to have some foliage in here and it probably will cover it up a little bit. Maybe we should do it more on an angle like that, Carol? Whatever you think it would okay, look good, Sandy. That's what I'm going to do then. <laughs> Okay, I am just going to actually grab this sponge, give it a little sand. You probably want this little seam to go to the back. So I'm just going to pull this apart. Put this down. And I'm just going to apply it right there. And once you kind of push it down, it does stick a little bit, uh, but not fully. You still have to rub it down, but it will stick in place. But once you set it down, it's pretty much set down. And just going to give it a little rub. Just like 
like that. And I'll pull away. You can see it is stuck down nicely. And it's just like your stencils that we often do that if you find it's not sticking, just put it back. Yeah. Rub it again. There. And then I'll just rub it down to make sure it's all nice and stuck. There, there's just one. We are gonna put a few more on. Um, and then we'll come back later and we'll show you about applying the wax. Applying the wax. Hi, so we're here for the last step of our workshop and it is applying the clear wax over top of the transfers. The transfers need to have uh, a sealer over top so you don't, if you spill something on them, they'll be sealed underneath it. Because virtually they feel very smooth. Uh, so you should get a little container with some clear wax. You're just going to dip it in on your rag and you're going to rub it over your transfer. Uh, it, it really isn't necessary to rub over to do the whole bench, but we are going to do the whole bench because you will see probably a color difference if we don't put the wax on the whole thing. Except the legs, we're not going to Yeah, we're not going to do the legs. We're just going to do basically the top and the sides of the bench. So just, it's just a really thin layer of wax that you're putting on. And you just dip our rag in there and just rub it over. It'll make it a nice smooth surface also once we get the wax on. Now do they have to put on very thick? No, it's very thin. Just a thin layer of wax. And do they have to use wax, or is there another product they could uh, use? You can use the. Uh, it has. It needs to be a water-based um, clear coat. So, like our tough coat, uh, you can put over top of it also. But it needs to be water-based. You can't put an oil base over top because I think the oil will actually reactivate the glue underneath the transfer and probably lift it off. So we're just doing it top of the bench put it on and then I'll put it all on there and then I'll kind of buff it once once I got it all on it does give it a little bit of a sheen so kind of a nice feel so you'll see that we didn't carry the transfer over on the side on this side because we felt that most of the time people put the bench against a wall or, or so we, we just want to carry it through on the front and now I'm going to apply it on our little container here too and this container we're going to put it all on the whole thing like that So I just got it smeared on now. See, it kind of has a little bit of sheen. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. So now I'm just going to kind of buff it. Just a little bit of pressure, kind of a circular motion, kind of pushing it in and buffing it out so you get a nice even film of wax on your bench. I'll do the same here on the sides. Just so it gets all over. And I'll get on this side. And you'll see once you're buffing, you can actually feel it's got a, you can feel a layer of wax on there. Really, really thin, but nice and smooth. Now, would you do that with the, the tin also? Yes, I'm going to do it with the tin too. I just want to get on there. Yeah, and now I'll do the same with the tin. I'll just give it a rub. It's kind of a buff is what it's called. I think it adds a little bit of, makes it a little brighter, 
the wax. There, so you can see you don't need much. I still have quite a bit of wax left. There. And that is our bench transfer with a little pot. Thanks Thank for you. Watching. watching.